shall, I shall read my text in English, and for the questions and answers will be Arabic and translated by a famous man who <laughs> studied in the United States of America. <laughs> so, dear Monsignor Kozak, members and staff of the Catholic Near East Culture Association, members of the religious and secular press, distinguished guests. I am grateful to be invited by Archbishop Dolan to the headquarters of Knewa, an association dedicated to charitable outreach among Catholic and Orthodox communities of the East. I am grateful to the Archbishop for the fine work that he and his collaborators are doing. It makes a tremendous difference in the lives of so many in lands where being a Christian is sometimes difficult. I thank all who work for Knewa and all who donate through their sacrifice, sacrificial gifts. Your efforts are reaching those in need. This afternoon, I will have the joy to be welcomed in an ecumenical gathering of Catholic, Orthodox, and Evangelical Christian leaders. Christians share a common faith in the crucified Lord, a respect for human rights and dignity, and an appreciation of the enduring value of a Christian marriage. I am also grateful for the religious and secular press here present that have gathered here today to allow the world to know what this religious man from a far off land called Lebanon has to say. I ask the world community to commit itself to implementing the UN resolutions concerning Lebanon in a direct way, such as the resolution 1701, which requires Israel to withdraw from the village Al Hajar, Shiba Farms, and hills of Kfar Shuba, and to refrain from violating Lebanese sovereignty. Likewise, in an indirect way, such as Resolution 194, which guarantees the half a million Palestinian refugees in Lebanon, the right of return. In Lebanon, Christians and Muslims made a conviviality, made of conviviality, a national pact. They incorporated it into the introduction of the Constitution, where it is stated, there is no legitimacy for any authority that contradicts the conviviality. That national pact was turned into a formula securing equal participa participation in government and civil service for Muslims and Christians. Thanks to this national pact, Lebanon became a secular country that separates religion from state and is governed on the basis of a consensual <coughs> parliamentary democracy guaranteeing civil liberties and basic human rights, in particular freedom of opinion, speech, religion, and conscience, where dialogue and consensus prevail. This is what motivated blessed Pope John Paul II to say, Lebanon is more than a country. It is a message of conviviality, of cooperation to both East and West, and an example of dialogue between Christians and Muslims. That constitutes a sign of hope for the peoples of the region, over and above the leading role played by Christians in the Arab Renaissance, both culturally and economically. Moreover, the church in Lebanon is considered a guarantee for the Christian presence for that part of the world. The sole 
the so-called Arab Spring, sweeping the Middle East, holds much promise, yet we must remain vigilant. The Church abhors the use of violence to meet any goal. Violence can never be justified. We want to see a Middle East renewed in its respect for human rights and dignity, especially for her minorities. We want to see people electing democratic governments and holding them accountable. It is important to point out the role the Christians played in upholding democratic principles, freedoms, and human rights in the Middle East. This is why a Christian presence there should be safeguarded and the role of Christians strengthened. I want to thank all at CNEWA who have made this visit so special and so as Meronite Patriarch, I would like to add, the Meronites have always in history been bridge builders. <coughs> I hope that this visit has built yet a small bridge for the good of the United States of America and for Lebanon. Thank you.